During the 1970s and 1980s, many people with developmental disabilities in Alberta who lived in institutions moved back into the community. Many parents advocated for their return to community living. The belief was that people with disabilities have a right to a normal life where they belong in the community like everyone else. A normal life means that people with disabilities have the right to live, work, have fun, and contribute to the community like everyone else. In the late 1960s and 1970s, community disability agencies across Alberta were formed to support people in the community. The first community programs were started to run group homes and sheltered workshops. Group homes were set up to support people with disabilities who live together in neighborhood homes. Sheltered workshops were set up to teach work skills to a group of people with disabilities in a closed environment. Today, agencies provide supported living, supported employment, and community access to people with disabilities. Supported living means that individuals can choose to live with a roommate or on their own, and staff can help them with their living needs. Supported employment means that staff help individuals to find a job of their choice in the community. Staff often assist individuals on the job until they feel comfortable with their assigned tasks to work on their own. Community access means that staff support individuals to do meaningful activities of their choice, such as sports, art, travel, and volunteering in the community. Now let's see what you've learned about community living. Let's do the community living worksheet in your passport. Please pause the video while you work on this activity. The first self-advocacy group in North America was People First. People First was formed in 1973 after a conference in Vancouver, British Columbia. In 1973, people with disabilities in BC and Oregon set up People First groups to talk about what it was like to have a disability and to speak up for their rights. Their first message was that they wanted the community to treat and value them as People First, to not treat them badly or look down on them because they had a disability. A People First group was also formed in Alberta, and it still exists today. Since 1973, many different self-advocacy groups have been set up across Alberta. Like People First, some examples today are the Disability Action Hall and Right to Love group in Calgary, the South Region Self-Advocacy Network, the Self-Advocacy Federation in Edmonton, and Northwest Advocates in Action. Self-advocates who lived in the 1970s and 1980s spoke up for their right to live meaningful lives in the community. Without their advocacy, life would be very different today for people with disabilities in Alberta. Today, people with disabilities can choose a life of their own and be supported to make and achieve goals. Before 1970s, most people with disabilities in Alberta were told what to do. They were told to live, go to school, and work in an institution. They were not allowed to get married and have children. Now, people with disabilities are supported to live, go to school, and work in the community. They are supported to make decisions and have loving relationships, to be active in and contribute to their community in meaningful ways. Self-advocacy is very important for persons with disabilities. Let's do the History of Self-Advocacy in Alberta worksheet in your passport. Pause the video now while you work on this activity. Congratulations, you finished part three of My History, Our Future. Next up is part four, Take the Lead, How to Teach Advocacy to Others. It starts with Unit 15, Helping Your Peers to Be Self-Advocates.